me ask you this. Where are you today? What do you want to see happen? What is your hope? With my hope, my hope is that somehow we can have a center of excellence, you know, otherwise known as like a hospital where there are doctors that understand what these kind of chemicals like dioxin and not just you know, not just the children of Vietnam veterans, but, you know, all, all uh, dioxins, yes, all of the, the generations of veterans that have been exposed to toxic, toxic chemicals, right, can be seen and treated correctly. Um, so we don't have to struggle the way that we do. When we go to a regular doctor, and they look at us like we have 10 heads, because we say, well, this is we know that our, our parent was exposed to this chemical and, uh, you know, we believe this is a result and, and they think that you're just crazy. Right. You know, right. And, and it's hard to be treated like that over and over and over and over. So our biggest hope is that there can be a, a place built that we can be seen at by people and doctors that understand how to treat these kinds of things. So do you think there's an education theme here as well as a communication theme? Oh, there's uh, definitely an education theme as well as a communication theme um, yeah. because they're not taught about these things in, in you know, your, your, your standard medical school. Right. Like, okay, for instance, um, in a neuro, neuro, uh, neurology book, for school, there's only four pages on Arnold Chiari malformation. Wow. In, in their textbook. Wow. Is that so, I mean, think it's... about that for a second. You know, they're very limited in what they learn unless they choose to specialize in that one condition. So, not only is it hard to get diagnoses, it's hard to find doctors that understand the diagnoses, no matter what they are. Because most of what we find that the children of Vietnam veterans are dealing with are either rare conditions or autoimmune issues. Right. Um, those tend to be what we see the most of and what we have seen the most of over the past 16 years that we've been doing this work. Right. And of course, you're talking a war that's over 50 years ago, right? Exactly. And so a lot of these veterans have passed on. And of course, the history gets lost mm -hmm. as well. It does. And it yet does. this is something where the death continues long after the war. Exactly. This is, I mean, we're living the aftermath. Yeah. Do you urge people to tell their story that are experiencing this thing, or at least make them aware I that do. This is I, actually happening. I urge every, every child of a Vietnam veteran or any veteran to tell their story because people need to know what we're going through and, and the struggles that we're dealing with. Because if we don't tell our story, nobody's going to know it. Right. Nobody's going to hear it. We're the ones that have to make ourselves heard in order to get the help that we need. And if we don't stand up and shout from the rooftops, if we have to, nobody else is going to do it. No, they won't do it. No, they we won't have to do it. do it for ourselves.